Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Dark Art Society podcast. I'm Chet Zar, your host. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, today I've got a really great interview with uh, an artist named C. Saros from Switzerland, who I met on Twitter. Uh, been in a couple Twitter spaces with him. Is this thing on? Can't hear it that loud. Okay. Yeah, never mind. Uh, yeah, cool guy. He's got really cool art. I didn't realize <laughs> until after the interview that he's in this really amazing band. I mean, we talked about it a little bit, but I didn't realize how big they were in the black metal scene. They're called Shamash, I guess. Shamash. But um, I listened afterwards. I was like, geez, this is really, I don't know, a cut above. I thought I thought it was really interesting and really good. And I'm not really into black metal, but they're kind of like experimental black metal is what they're called, but really interesting. A lot of really cool stuff. Uh, different, different sounding. I liked it right off the bat. So I wish I would have known that before we started the interview, but he doesn't really talk about his band a whole lot within his uh, visual art career. So anyway, fun interview, really good one, really cool dude. Um, so that's coming up. I realized last week I forgot to read the new subscribers. So I, it's probably going to be screwed up. If I didn't read your name and you want it read, just let me know. But I'll read... Um, the list I have. I'm going to do it right now. So I don't forget if you want to join the uh, dark art society, Patreon and support the podcast. Uh, it's uh, patreon.com slash dark art society. And our new subscribers are Tony Buhagyar. I'm sorry if I butchered your name, Tony. Um, Lucas Nice, K N I H S and Lisa Sprite Hansen. Man, I can't see. My eyes are going. I need glasses bad. I have these reading glasses, cheaters, they call them. If you're watching the video, you can see. After my mom died, she had all these reading glasses around the house. So I got all these funky ass reading glasses <laughs> that I use. Oh, man. Crazy. Uh, so, okay. I got that out of the way to, to make sure I got it. Um, if you join at the $5 and above level, you will get an opportunity to win a free skull from our sponsor, the skull shop. That's S H O P P E skull shop.com. And you'll get a skull, something like this. If you're watching the video podcast, Great skull, right? I use it all the time. I was going to uh, draw the name out of a hat this episode, but I couldn't get get it together in time. And it's already like 7.20 and I got things I still have to do. It was a crazy day. I spent hours. I went and did my civic duty and voted today. Um, like everybody should because crazy people get, keep getting voted in. And when you've got crazy people making the laws, you get a crazy country. Anyway, I spent, you know, normally I kind of vote. In the past, I've just kind of voted, not paid attention to the um, judges, circuit court judges or whatever's up, insurance commissioner and all this crap that nobody knows what they do. And I went, I spent like three hours. I went through every single person on the ballot and I researched them all and I picked all the right judges I liked and all the different weird, you know, city council members and, and, and all this stuff. So it took a long time, though. It took a long time and it wasn't easy to find all that information, but I feel good about it. And if you don't think voting doesn't matter, then ask that dipshit dr oz he won by three thousand votes he won the republican primary i mean i'm not gonna get into it anyway um so i did that um 
what else? Been shipping books, same old story. I'm just, you know, 340 books shipped to the Kickstarter, which is great, which is well over half. And I start, and I'm kind of waiting to hear back from people um, from the Kickstarter because I've just shipped to everybody who's gotten in touch with me and given me their new address. And um, so I started shipping the ones, the pre orders from my website. So I'm getting those out also. So I guess you can get one. <laughs> I need to start promoting this book because it's, uh, you know, probably definitely one of the most amazing things I've ever been a part of or created or helped create. And um, it's uh, available at jetzar.bigcartel.com. But I need to get on some web um, uh, podcasts. Anybody has any recommendations for podcasts? I want to try and get on some some kind of big ones and promote it if I can. Um, let me know if you know any good ones that might be good for promoting an art book dis- being disguised as a um, field guide. It's both really, but I, out of all the feedback I've gotten from the book so far is all really, really good. Haven't heard one bad thing about it. Not even one slightly bad thing about it. Everybody really loves it. So I guess the five-year wait was worth it as much as it doesn't feel like it was to me at this point because it it was just took my life over for five years but um something really good came out of it so um i guess that's all that's going on working still oh i got finishing tool posters those are taking longer everything takes longer i'm just too optimistic i always think i can do things faster than i can and, and they just take longer and so I just need to be more realistic with my time frames, but those are almost done. Then I got to get to work on these zombie death bots painting for my show in October. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it. Um, yeah. Okay. I keep feeling like I'm forgetting something. I don't want to forget something again. I did the names. I guess that's it. Well, if I forget something, I forget something. It's it's getting hard to do this podcast every week, I have to say. It's it's a lot. It's a lot on top of everything I'm already doing. And uh, I love doing it, but I'm wondering if I should go to like twice a month instead of four times a month, because it's a lot. <laughs> it's like a whole day ends up getting, you know, it's like the interview day ends up kind of screwing that whole day up for other work. And then the editing and recording this ends up kind of screwing the second day up. So it's like two days a week kind of get messed up. It's not that it takes two full days to do, but you know, it's hard to get into a kind of rhythm of anything else when you have this other thing that you're trying to do or something you have to do, that's going to take a few hours and then you're tired after. So I don't know. I'm going to, for now, I'm going to keep going and maybe just taking, take a week off once in a while and see how that goes. But it's not easy. It's a lot of work, but I'm going to keep doing it. Um, all right. I, I, I can't think of anything else to say. I think I covered everything. Um, go to skullshop.com, S-H-O-P-P-E, and uh, join the Patreon, patreon.com slash dark art society at the $5 and above level every month. You'll be um, entered to win a skull from the skull shop. And uh, next week, I'll, I'll pull that name out of that next week, and we'll see. That'll be for last month's, and then at the end of this month, we'll we'll do another one. Okay, that's it. Let's get on with it. My interview with C. Saros. Okay, I hope you enjoy it. Here it goes. What's up, Chris? Hey, man, Chad. Great to see you. Uh, Good to see lucky you. Lucky to be here. Fellow long hair. Fellow long yeah. hair. I had no idea. We're few and <laughs> far between these days. I guess yeah, maybe not in the absolutely. middle in the metal community, but um, 
well even there they get fewer and fewer i, <laughs> I think like it's not cool anymore to have long hair for a lot of people that's I why i like it though that's one yeah, of the things yeah, i like I'm, about it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not really like the typical metal guy f- for a long time anymore because uh, I barely listen to metal nowadays. I l- mostly listen to ambient if, if I listen to any music. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I just like the, the aesthetics and, and guess it, it suits me. And uh, yeah, now they're getting less and less and I have to enjoy the time I have left with my hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just it's like. I don't know. I've always had long hair. So it's my mom let me grow my hair long. I had, I think I had like one haircut that's on film on super eight um, film from like probably 1970 or <laughs> wow. I was three years old and I just was hating it. Like, eh, like just hating it, getting a haircut. And then I remember at some point my mom just let me keep it long let it keep growing and and it's just i just never really one time i shaved it in the 90s just to see what that was like other than that i just can't be bothered to cut it i just don't give a shit and um it's just the way it naturally grows to me it's like that's the way your hair should is supposed to be because that's the way it grows that's the way i see it yeah not that it matters (laughs) but you know it's like i don't know it's just i don't know i mean it I still get laughs all the time on the streets when people see me, like they, they point at me and really, uh, especially <laughs> a lot of children actually. Yeah. They're like, Oh, mommy, look, this guy has long hair. Is it a woman or is it a guy? <laughs> I mean, that's one of the, that's one of, to me, that's one of the benefits too, is that, you know, I, I never, I don't like, I like not doing what everybody else is doing. I just am like that, you know? Yeah. Um, I guess we're quite similar. In that, in- <laughs> uh regard absolutely i mean that- yeah I've, I've i've had long hair since i don't know since i started growing them when i was like 15 or 16 or something and i never cut them since then so mm. that was kind of my um one of the symbols for for me as a team to kind of break free from a lot of shitty things so yeah i, I mean i guess i just kept that because i liked it I yeah i that- like it yeah that was the i mean for me it was growing i was growing up in the 70s and it was like rock that rock yeah yeah rock course, was like the the that was our culture rock music you know like aerosmith and all these bands acdc and black sabbath and it was like it hadn't really gone to metal yet <clears throat> but my brother and all his friends had long hair especially my brother always had long hair and so at that time I wanted to, you know, I looked up to my brothers. I think that's maybe why I started wearing my hair long. And then all the bands I liked had long hair. And I just, you just don't even think about it. You just want to be like the things that you're into at the time. You're like seven years old, 10 years old, listen to Kiss or whatever. And it's like, they have long hair, you have long hair. And I just, and then I would get so much shit for it. And uh, growing up too, that, really? like, like, yeah, because it was like, still none of the, none of most kids, parents wouldn't let their hair grow that long and um and people always thought i was like a bad kid because i had long hair so so for me it was like i'm just gonna grow it longer then <laughs> if, you, if you're gonna judge me on that you know fuck you so it was kind of like a way to just sort of say oh you're wrong and i'm gonna have longer hair so fuck you and then yeah I just, yeah kind i guess of kind of kept that attitude maybe <laughs> well i mean it's not a bad attitude though is it yeah no I, I don't think so. Not necessarily. So anyway, talk, let's talk about you and your art. So, so we met on Twitter, right? We met through NFTs. I've been bringing more yeah. NFT people <laughs> on the podcast because that's kind of what I've been getting into lately. And, uh, and I'm discovering all these new artists. So I think it's cool to open up the dark art society to a lot of artists that aren't talked about in the general, in the regular normal community that I, you know, only knew about until I got onto NFT Twitter. And, um, so yeah, and we've been on a Twitter space, Twitter spaces before and got along well, and you do cool, dark digital artwork and, and playing a metal band. So it's like, you know, perfect, perfect reason to have you on the podcast. So thanks for coming <laughs> on. Me, it's really an honor. Seriously. Like, um, I gotta say, I, I didn't know, uh, 
you were the guy who did all the tool stuff uh, before before I saw it on Twitter. And uh, I think you liked one of my posts or so when I checked out your profile and I was like, fucking hell, it's it's that guy. And I mean, I, I knew the art, but but I really didn't know a lot about like the person behind it. And, and uh, yeah, I started checking out your stuff uh, and, and like your activities and in, in the NFT space. And, and uh, I was super impressed. Like, I mean, I told you like 10 times before, uh, it's super cool what you're doing for the space and, and that you're like, you know, caring about small time artists like me compared to, to what yourself, like to your career and stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I think like it's super cool and, and uh, more people should do it in your position. And oh, well, there I appreciate, are some, appreciate it. Yeah, there, there are some. I feel like... Not all of them, of course, but some yeah, of these. There are some, but, but I feel like um, more of a responsibility to do that in the dark art community because it's already so niche and, and small that, you know, we need it more than other people in a way we need to like uh support each other because it's such a small community even though the more i'm you know the the more time moves on the the bigger i realize it is it's just you know it just seems i'm just used to thinking it as this kind of minority art movement but it's kind of not becoming that in a way i think it's spreading out i see a lot of people who see us now as the cool kids and they want to like change their art to come like they're thinking oh my art's not dark dark enough and they want to like come in the scene and it's like that's all good because you know i feel like you know dark artists are kind of like tattoo people in the in the way that they're not they've been so judged so often that they they're they don't they tend not to judge people that aren't don't have tattoos as much you know they're like more open to just being friends with whoever or, yeah, yeah you know right. and so um i feel like dark art people are like that too because we're we're used to being marginalized so so we're open to having people come in and totally cool with all types of art but i mean but, as long as it's like as long as there's like a certain uh, honesty behind it absolutely that's what i was going to say it's like i don't i hate i'd hate to think that someone is changing their style just to fit in right that's not that that's like the kind of bad thing about creating a group identity you know it's like initially we're doing it so that we can kind of survive and thrive with each other's help and then it gets to a i mean this is like kind of the 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 way things go you know it gets bigger and bigger and then it becomes more mainstream and then people want in and they start trying to fit in and it's like no we don't want that (laughs) we don't want people you should do what you want you should do what you are feeling and if that's happy art i'll still love it and we'll still be friends and we'll still support each other but you don't have to change yourself to, to be friends with me as an artist basically i guess absolutely and and i really gotta say like I don't know. I've collected stuff on 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 uh, object before, uh, which was actually not not dark at all, just right. uh, because there was like, you know, I'm, I mean, I I don't even need an explanation for myself. Like, it yeah. just you like I, what you like. I, it just resonated with me, and and like good art is good art, no, no matter what the style is or the genre or whatever you want to call it. Like, yeah. if there's like something that resonates with me in some way, then then I like it, and uh, yeah, I mean. I don't really give a shit about what what the label behind it is, and and uh, yeah, I absolutely agree. People should absolutely not just like you know try to fit in anywhere or or change their style or, or whatever they want to do, just to you know be more successful, I guess, or whatever the reasons for that might be. But it's certainly not the right approach. Yeah, I just I I that's it's just not what I imagined it to be about you know it's about authenticity and and i just hate to think that someone feels like they need to change to be part of the crew or whatever i mean it's whatever yeah authenticity is really the word isn't it i mean i mean in the end like art should be an expression of 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 yourself or like aspects of yourself and and uh, And, yeah and and reflection to your environment i think and and if it doesn't fulfill that purpose then there's no point in doing it because then it's just like it's just a shallow activity that you do for the wrong reason and it's not going to bring any, right. anything fulfilling you yeah know? you're or you're not and you're not going to add anything to art history or the art world at large that need, of course yeah you know like uh, i think we're 
I think that was in this thread that we're in together in that dark art thread we were talking this morning about, um, weren't we, or maybe, I don't know if you were talking about, I was talking about it with somebody about how we were talking about Andy Warhol. Was that where you were? Yeah, in? yeah, a bit. We, all, we were also talking about the AI thing I started. Yeah, oh, yeah, that, yeah the, right. AI, the AI thing. And um, I forget what my point was now. I mean, you're... <laughs> I was going to make in, a point. <laughs> during the discussion, I think your point was that, um, you know, that it, it doesn't, like, the, the artwork itself isn't so much dependent on, on where it comes from uh, as long as, as, like... Oh, yeah, as long as the image is, as long as it's good art. You right know, it's like and that's that's you know having the eye we were talking about ai art, art and i don't remember what my main point is but anyway since we're talking about this we'll just go <laughs> on to this but uh we we're talking about ai art and whether it's cheating because it's you know you don't have right. any skill but i was trying to make the point that it's like the skill is seeing what looks good and knowing that something's a good piece of art and you know it doesn't do it for me like to me coming up with a prompt and then creating a piece of AI art, even if it's totally amazing, it just wouldn't be satisfying. Cause I like painting or mm -hmm. creating. I like making it. I like the technical part of it. That's fun for me. And so it wouldn't fulfill me, but other people, I mean, I see stuff that looks like it's purely generated from AI and I just think it's amazing. It's like, I think it stands I, on its I, own. Yeah, it's I, so I, I'm cool. seeing I feel like I'm only seeing that by now on, on, like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. on, on Instagram, on Twitter, every, everywhere. Like everybody's trying it out. Even the uh, one of my absolute favorite uh, artists in, in this space. I mean, he's, he didn't really join the space big time, but he had some NFT stuff going on, uh, which is Necro. Oh, Spain, yeah, this stuff's amazing. I asked him to be on the podcast. I mean, fucking hell. Actually, and, and he, and he said his English wasn't good enough, so. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, right. You told this stuff before, is so is good. Oh my god, so inspiring! Hell, I mean, it, he's such an original. His his style is like just one of a kind. You you just know it, it one in a million. You just see it right away. And <clears throat> and he, he started doing AI stuff. And ah, fucking hell, I mean, it's it's mind blowing. And, and the way and, he's doing it is really different, or it's cool. The way I mean, it's not. I guess maybe it's you, can, you still see that it's his. Yeah, because he's he's really great, and he's cutting things out and making all these layers and fitting them together to create a composition from these all these weird elements he's rendering in AI. It's really right. fascinating, and uh, and I think that's that's like the the right way. I mean, right way in in my opinion, I guess, or or the most right way you can use <laughs> that stuff. Right. And I my my question today was uh, in the chat uh, actually because I um I was planning or. Oh, that was you. Yeah. Him. Okay. Yeah, that was me, right? That was you. <laughs> <laughs> I was planning to to just uh, uh, experiment around with like a little collection of like maybe twenty pieces or so, uh, which are, which would be based on on purely AI stuff and like similar kind of uh, avatars or characters uh, in in kind of a Giger skull style. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. I, I was experimenting around a couple of days ago with 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 those keywords and that came up and i started doing variations and it was just like fucking hell one after another is just genius and <laughs> and i can't stop creating these and or, or generating these and and i thought like fuck man i gotta do something with that and and i started uh using them as alphas uh, on 3d oh, so cool. basically like the, the the result was basically like it, it looks like an embossed plate basically right. mm -hmm. and that's uh, cool yeah yeah i i loved how that turned out and i i started playing around with that a long time and and uh yeah i was asking myself like how can i still incorporate the original uh as well as the 3d piece for each of these because it would be a pity not have to not having the original as well in the plate mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. My basic question was, what do you guys think about minting uh, original uh, uh, AI pieces without any any alterations yeah. to it? Even though there would be a second piece, which which was an alteration, of course. Yeah. But uh, it's still like, yeah, it's basically it's one click, and and there you go, and there you have it. And there's, I mean, there's a lot of different opinions about it. It really depends on your perspective about art and what you value. I think you know everybody's yeah. Kind of different. And, right for me it's also like kind of the question you know am i doing something wrong with that because uh 
it's too easy um, yeah it's too easy it's it's cheating like that's right. how it feels like. and, and but but but, what but are people gonna think and I, I shouldn't i shouldn't think about what people are gonna think because it just really doesn't matter or it yeah matter. <laughs> and uh you know aside from the fact that there's a whole group of collectors that just likes it you know i mean but um you know the thing is i think what i think of is like you know where do you draw the line because people some people are anti-digital art traditional oil paint there's a lot of people in the traditional yeah, painting true. scene they're like it's not real art it's not physical it's not real so it's like they're drawing a line there yeah. but but i that's it's it's not about whether they're right or wrong is my point is yeah. that is that okay if you're doing digital art and then saying AI isn't real art that you're drawing a line there. And it's like, so it's like, yeah. you know, you either you have a line you draw or I guess you don't, but, but you can, you know, there's all these things like using a, you know, tracing an image to get it on a canvas. There's a million things that people don't think is real art because it's, it's too easy or whatever. But I, 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 again, I go back to what satisfies you as an artist and if it's a good yeah. movie, if if it satisfied you making it, you love it, you think it's amazing, and it's a great image, then it doesn't matter. It's 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 art, and it's and it's good. You know what I mean? That's kind of the way I I see it. I mean, that's probably a very healthy approach, and and I'm probably gonna take that with me after the chat. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, I would I would just fucking hate not doing anything with these pieces. So I'm yeah, probably exactly. gonna do it yeah and exactly what happens. And and if some people come up and be like, oh, why are you starting this shit now as well or whatever? I don't. I mean, I, I don't really need their judgment anyway. So. Yeah, and if it's an issue with a collector, you could always say, well, look at here's the piece I used with my 3D the way I usually do stuff. Like you're yeah, saying, right. you kind of have both bases covered on it. But I just love that it's 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 just incredible just the technology itself but the idea um that it's it's forcing artists to push forward and go further because like yeah, for me, yeah, for me it's like you know i made the a comment i think it was last night or yesterday or something like how inspired i am not i'm not really inspired to to do ai art as much as i am I have thought about like using it just as an idea generator, just to paint. Cause mm -hmm. I just love, I love painting and stuff, but, um, but I do, I love digital art too. So, so, but, I, but the thing that um, inspires me, I just to get inspired looking at stuff like that's something like this has never existed before. Some of this AI stuff is like, even though a lot of it's starting to look the same because people aren't putting the same effort in all, all the yeah, time yeah, cool. and there's a look to it, but, but, some of it is like this is amazing i've never seen anything like it and that inspires me to to push further with my art so it's like you want to go i feel like or not you but i feel like i want to go deeper with my art and more creative because i'm inspired by what i see ai art doing you know yeah it's it's really it's the same for me i i mean first time when that wombo app came up like yeah right go with the we were all having fun in the chat and, you know, right. <laughs> we were having a lot of fun making fun of this shit because right. was really just like all the, all the people who have no clue about art or, or not doing anything. And in, in that way, just started using it and, and started put up stuff on uh, as NFTs as well. And yeah. you could just see in like a second, like, okay, you, ju you just use this fucking app and, and now you think you're an artist or something like that. Which is like one of the downsides, I guess. It's, for, but but the, like, that's, I, the, that's the thing. It's like, there's that side. There's that way to look at it. And the other way, I try and look at it like uh, sub, uh, uh, objectively. And I, and I think, okay, you know, I spent 20 years getting as good as I am, you know, working hard to, to get mm -hmm. to be able to create the, a painting or something. And someone with no experience, no artistic ability whatsoever can just go on and create a piece of art using ai <clears throat> but using uh, your name as a keyword <laughs> right right true true but um as we've seen it before <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was have. so funny by the way <laughs> i just saw that by random like like uh, i was typing my own keywords in and, and i suddenly saw like a guy <laughs> typing jets what the fuck that's how that's how um 
famous you are. <laughs> <laughs> but well, the point I was going to say is that's kind of a good thing in a way too. It's like, it's not, it's, you can look at it that way, or you could look at it as like, wow, art has opened up for, it's for everyone now. Like everyone can partake in this amazing thing that only few of us that have taken the time to learn about it can. And I think art can just be such an, you know, a life and enriching experience to create it. And so um, I think that's kind of a good thing that anybody can do it. Um, and you know, but the, but there's, there is the other side and there is the, <laughs> and there is the idea about, you know, losing value of the traditional stuff in the same way that like, like music now is it's yeah, like right. music now b- before an album would come out, it was this big, it was on vinyl, it had a gatefold, amazing, all this information on it. I mean, when I was a kid, I'm talking and it was like an event when an album came out, you went to the store you bought it, you sat down and listened to it yeah, like along it with the experience. lyrics. It was an experience. Right. It was like an afternoon and it was amazing. It was the same for me, basically, when I got into music with like, I don't know, like when I got into rock and metal, mm-hmm. with like 14 or 15 or so, like for me, that was, those were like the big moments in my life back then when like a new album came out from a band I really loved, which was yeah. like, yeah, I don't so know. Exciting. I would are they like gonna, three are they gonna do it this time? Are they going to do right, a good right. one or is it going to be bad? You don't know. And it's like, and it's right. good when it's good. And it's like, oh my God, it's so cool. You know, just life changing. And, and nowadays, like, I think the, the, the technology and, and the streaming especially took a lot of that magic away from, from how music is produced nowadays and how right. it is handled and how it is, how it is, uh, you know, um, seen by, by the public and, and a, by the business as well. That's the thing I was going to say is that now with technology, that there is a version of AI for music. It's like, it's, it's actually right. easy. You could spend half an hour on garage band and write a song because there's drum. You could like push a few buttons and get a drum beat going and you could play a single note and it does a whole scale yeah. and chords and you don't have to really know how to play music to create music. And now there's a lot more music, uh, just a lot more music needed for, um, you know, content for intros to YouTube videos and this and that. And, and it kind of has created like a, you know, that and um, streaming. An overflow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like a, lo- a lower sort of lowers the value of. Music yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. In a way. That's what I, that's what, I, so what my point was in the discussion earlier today about the AI stuff. Like, I think there's always, there's like the more there's an overflow of something, the, the more, uh, like uh, its value gets lowered and and uh, i've seen that like dramatically happening to music uh, during the past 10 years yeah and yeah. um now i feel like the, with with the ai art coming coming big time now i think i fear that something like that might happen as well in some to some degree but i also like i've been very kind of i don't know a bit frightened by the whole thing the half past half year or so but uh, i really have to kind of let go of that feeling because i mean you can either as i said before as well in the chat you can either adapt or you die and, right i mean it's better to adapt i guess and and you know the te- technology is here and it's not going to go away again and better use it and and right and, create something cool out of it and, and just let go of the bad negative stuff that comes with it. Yeah. Just I, find, find how, find the good in it basically. And what, yeah, right. Cause it, cause it, it could, it could spur on something that you've never would have thought of. That's totally amazing that you never, I mean, I, never I, would have I, thought of in your so whole much life. fun. I really <laughs> have to say it's so much fun using this shit. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it can be so such a creative process and it's fucking addictive as well. Like, yeah, that's what I, I keep hearing. I started, creating like generating these the like once you get into it there's no stopping you i really had to to stop myself like telling myself <laughs> fucking hell you just gotta step away from that again now. otherwise it's just gonna eat up your whole creativity right. for a moment but i mean yeah it's 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 a lot of fun and there's a lot of po- potential in it uh for people like us i guess and uh, yeah, there's no point in in, in uh, getting in, into the whole resentment part because 
that's what I've been doing for the past, I don't know, five years in, in the music business because that's that's getting so fucked up and, and I just completely got devoured by that feeling of um, no matter what you do, it's not enough anymore. Uh, right. No matter how how little you earn, people still think like you you're a fucking rock star or whatever, and mm -hmm. and they still don't appreciate uh, how much fucking big effort there is in in this whole thing nowadays, and and how much you have to give in for getting so little back, at least financially. Right. And yeah, I it's mean, ridiculous. And then people are starting to to you know. Um, judge you because you had the thought of being able to make a living out of that at some point which i was at least part wise and uh, still am but uh yeah i mean people come up to you and, and tell you like well it's your own fault if you thought you're you're gonna you know you, you can make a living out of that just get a normal job like everybody else and do it on the side as a hobby fuck no it's a fucking job yeah you is. consume it every day like on 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 your uh, travel to work and and like when you're home listening to your stuff and and you don't give a shit how it's made as long as you can consume it for like a couple of cents a month and and people like me are fucking starving to death because of that uh, i mean that's not the case but i mean you know <laughs> yeah, um, yeah figuratively speaking and and uh it's just a pity and I mean, I would... th there's a lot of resentment in that, uh, which I carry around with me every day. And, and it's just not healthy. I mean, there's nothing you can change at the end of the day. And, and it's better to just, you know, focus on the positive, I guess. You kind of have to, you know, the, the, yeah. the, the things that it's like, like, again, it's a mixed bag. It's like the old ways of doing things is fucked up, especially yeah. particularly with music. And it's not going to work anymore. So, but, but there's all these, you know, you can release music so much more easily. Now you can get your work out yeah, there. True. You there's so much. You don't more even have to have a label anymore. Yeah. You, you can, can make do it, it all by yourself. Yeah. Basically. You can, and you can make an album with a, a MacBook or anything, a laptop and make a whole album with just you. And it's like, that's kind of amazing. And there, and you could get every guitar sound possible you know there's plugins for every sound yeah. it's crazy it's, it's so, so it's absolutely incredible in some way how easy it got but also yeah, yeah i mean there's always you can't make sides. any money <laughs> it's hard to make any money <laughs> i was just talking to a friend of mine who was uh again he's the guy who onboarded me uh, into nfts and helped me out oh uh, um, what was his name I, I i still didn't check out his stuff actually oh you I'm, oh you'll love it it's great uh it's called his jo he's josh breckenridge and um the band is with our arms to the sun it's really good and amazing listen to it when we're done with our arms to the sun he was pl he played me some stuff from their last album and i was like i can't believe it sounds as good as like tools last album like recording quality and he did it all himself because he was a recording engineer and he i you know he i think he i think all the drums he programmed and, yeah and it just was like the, the but the quality was just amazing it's and he did it all in his just with his own equipment at home in his a garage you know and so that's amazing but we were talking about how hard it was for bands to make money nowadays and um you know he, he was talking about how you know some bands have to big bands have to like pay to get in festivals like a lot of money like tens of thousands of dollars to get in a festival in a music festival to like headline for a band you know that's that's new to me i mean it used to be like that with touring but for getting into a festival i mean maybe or, or maybe for touring maybe he was talking about touring i but mean I, yeah probably but that's like, like crazy to, i never yeah, but knew that, that that's what i did in 2014 on my first tour as well we paid like i don't know seven thousand euros to get to get the tour bus uh seats um, i mean the, the but i mean the, you had to pay the, did you have to and stuff did you have to pay to get the gig i'm talking about like paying the promoters no, to get on no, the bill it, i mean I, I guess it depends on how you see it i mean what we pay in the end what we paid was just like the you know our our uh, bunks in the tour bus and and the driver of the tour bus and everything else yeah I that, guess. That, I, that's a way of paying but the, but to have right. that and then having to pay yeah, the, there is really is fucked up. Pay to so play wrong. tours. Yeah, and then terrible. you have like 
10 uh, small time bands paying their their asses off to be on that tour and they play for half an hour or so and then like the big bands come and no one gives a shit about the small yeah, stuff yeah it's it's just terrible <laughs> i mean yeah it's, it's a fucked up business really yeah it's yeah it really, really is <laughs> but you know that's one one thing i know that josh has talked about a lot is the the um the opportunity to monetize used through nfts whether it's like you know there there is this i know there's a lot of talk about music nfts somehow yeah. making it possible and i think it seems like it's going to happen at some point nobody knows how yeah, it I seems like but at this point you can if you're also a visual artist you can create visual art and then you can put your music on it and that's kind of a way of making the art unique and selling your music in a way too you know a weird roundabout yeah, way absolutely i'm actually still surprised that um at least to my knowledge like th there's not really much happening still in in that regard yeah yet. right everyone's talking about it but no one's really yeah, right. done it yet and i've seen like some bigger bands starting getting into it and like they put out one or so and it didn't work probably because it wasn't established well enough in, in like the for the uh, people who don't know shit about this stuff and uh right. yeah i guess they just dropped it again but um i've had some plans for one of my bands which which would be a great fit for for this kind of stuff because it's like synth wave mm. and um i love that stuff yeah fucking hell there's so much to discover in that world as well but it would be a great fit um for the nft space but i just i just, at the end I just, of the day i just couldn't start another fucking project i mean yeah right I'm doing so much at the same time by the way that's probably also the reason i i got confused about the time again <laughs> <laughs> second time in a row it's so hard to coordinate it's so hard to coordinate no now. actually it's really easy you just I'm, have to i yeah i'm used to it now because i have to do it a lot because of the podcast but i still get screwed up i still get screwed up all the time with it it's like especially because you guys use like 1900 hours i'm like what the hell is that okay 12 13 14 15 16 i have to count down that because we don't use that that kind of time we go p.m yeah, you know right. it's like <laughs> so it's so it's just like very confusing but so so what what um you know you you create like the dark digital 3d art is, is kind not of only, your main not thing only. i mean that's it, it that's, always that's all the stuff i've seen in in your uh, and your nft stuff is kind of like darker 3d type work most of them i got one series on known origin uh which is purely photoshop 2d based based oh, on, cool. on on photographs actually uh of which i'm quite proud and happy with uh mm -hmm. that stuff but but those pieces are so time consuming like one of them takes like i don't know three weeks to make right and um I only did, I think, six of them so oh, far. Oh, is that the nameless? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's I did, yeah, I, I totally forgot about that. You're right. That's the first stuff I saw from you, actually. Was actually, that. it was the one of the first of, of one of them was the fir very first. I minted as an NFT and then I burned it again and minted yeah, it somewhere else and burned it again. Like, <laughs> it just didn't work out. And, and they they're still super like, cool. I love them. I think they're so Thanks cool a lot, looking. man. Yeah, I love it. Love it. I, I still like that stuff as well, but uh, I don't know. Still, still didn't sell much of these. Yeah, but, they're really, uh, really psychedelic too. I like that you're mixing yeah. psychedelia and dark. It's like dark psychedelia. Yeah, I, I would say that's that's a good description. Right, it's like stuff that I've seen when I tripped before, when my ego <laughs> was breaking down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess uh, it came from from like such a place for me as well, probably. Like the whole fractal kind of stuff yeah 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 i like it too because you're using it's just very forward thinking it's like it's it really captures kind of the like the dark psychedelic experience but it's also you use it it's very it's not shying away from from being looking like the medium it's created in which is digital it's not you're mm -hmm. not trying to make it look not digital you know i think that's cool to just like lean into the medium you're using and be yeah. like you know it's digital it's and that's cool you know what i mean it doesn't have to look like a painting it doesn't have to look scratched up or whatever or like a photo you know what i'm saying that's kind of an approach i actually use in in my 3d stuff like the dystopia stuff uh the the monochrome 
stuff I have on yeah. the foundation. It, that, that, that's more an approach of I want to make it look as real as possible. And right, right. It, like, <clears throat> old photograph style I've, do, well, I've done but... it too i've done it too i just i i, I think there i've done it to where i've like run like uh scratchy film filters because i think it looks right cool. but but um i do There's like a, a i like the pure digital basic. approaches yeah exactly it's like it depends on what you're going for you know um so so what's let talk about your you know well talk about you you're in switzerland right which seems like a really super cool place to live but i don't know it's it's i've heard the, the only bad thing i've heard about it is expensive very expensive from what i've heard well that's a very true fact <laughs> <laughs> probably one of the five expense most expensive countries to live in on, on the whole fucking planet that's crazy but at least no you got you got like a, a healthcare system that works yeah but uh, i pay a lot of insurance every month like we have like a, a a mandatory insurance system where you have to like there's different places you can sign up for that to pay it and mm -hmm. they all basically offer the same thing more or less but they vary uh, greatly in prices oh. some of them do a cheap shitty job and some of them are expensive and do a better job of course well, sounds kind of like here <laughs> yeah i mean at least we we always have to you know like the safety net so to speak uh if if i don't know if you need to call an ambulance or something like that and or need to go to surgery and it costs like thirty thousand bucks or so then you are safe uh you probably pay if if you have the shittiest offer you probably play, pay like up to two thousand five hundred francs on your own mm -hmm. which is about the same more or less in dollars and and the rest is taken care of yeah, so, so it, won't, it won't wipe you it's, out. It's never going to be life yeah. ruining in yeah. Switzerland, yeah. which is a big, obviously a big and 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 a very important difference to to the you guys uh, yeah. healthcare system, it's insane. which is quite fucked up. I'm, it's I mean, so it, fucked up. <laughs> it's still beyond me how this how uh, how like this still can be the case. It's so fucking strange, really. Yeah, it's well, it's like you know, it's a minority um, of it's a minority. Yeah, I, know I don't want to get mean. too. I don't want to get too too yeah, too yeah. into politics, but it's like the minor the, the minority party is just won't let it happen. Yeah, yeah. for what for I a, mean, lot, a lot of reasons, but um, for now. But I think at some point there, you know, their luck is going to run out. It's yeah, it's not going to last yeah. forever. I think and, it's uh, actually it's worse because they're 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 they know, that's why they've tried to stop the election from happening it's like they're it's yeah, des yeah. total desperation because they they know Absolutely. that their days are numbered because the people are, the world is changing and what is the saying like um what was it how was it um like a wounded dog is barking the loudest or something right. like that yeah yeah totally <laughs> Which is, I, I probably said it it's it very makes wrong it like makes the, total total i know exactly what you're saying it's and i think it's right. true too but so anyway, you are uh, you you you're from Switzerland. You you grew you've been yeah, there yeah. your whole life. And Absolutely. were you into when did you start getting into art and all of that and weird art too? You know, dark art. Oh, you know, uh, I remember your documentary when you when you uh, told that story about um, going to the store with your mom wearing masks and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much did the same thing. To really. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be so much in, into masks, like Halloween and stuff. Was yeah. always, even though it wasn't really a thing in my childhood in Switzerland, mm -hmm. like McDonald's had like their their crappy uh, latex masks, mm. uh, and the Happy Meals or something, <laughs> and it was Halloween. But it was like there was not really. It's still not really a thing here, apart from just like the media and stuff and right. Halloween parties or shit. Um, but yeah, I was super into that kind of stuff and. Uh, I was fascinated by masks. I started drawing, I don't know, I can't remember when, probably when I was old enough to, you know, hold a, a pen. Mm -hmm. I was drawing my whole childhood, basically, and um, that was my always my, my big thing to go to, what I was spending my time with as a kid, mostly, and I, I was super into comics as well, comic books, okay, Marvel yeah, I, stuff. You, were stuff your pa like parents your supportive? No, not really. No, I mean, they liked the drawing, but um, I don't know. Like in Switzerland, it's it's a very it's it's a very how do I say that? Like it's very different, probably compared to the states when it comes to um, 
um, I guess, following your dreams when it comes to careers and stuff like that. Here, especially during that time still, it's gotten a bit better by now, I guess. But back then it was just like the rule for everybody. Either you go to college or if, you're, if your uh, grades aren't good enough, then, then you just do like an apprenticeship when you're done with school um, around 15 or age of 16. And that's just the way. Either you di do this or do that. And, and there's nothing in between, basically. Right. And, um, I mean, yeah, there, there, there wasn't many options to uh, pursue this kind of artsy kind of um, way of making a career or something like that. And my grades weren't good enough for that anyway, like doing it the proper way. Right. And um, yeah. I don't know, I never really had a clue what I wanted to do when it come, came to like learning a job and um, because everything just seemed boring as fuck. <laughs> <Really>. <laughs> but art would you know if that was an option you would have been there right that would have of been of course of yeah course. yeah I mean, yeah well I mean that, that that's one thing about Switzerland that seems kind of screwed up is that and maybe it's different now but even Giger who is like the god of us all into this kind of art uh, yeah. was not really respected in Switzerland, not on a grant on a great scale like he, he should is have been. nowadays. Yeah, he is nowadays. Right. I think more or less. I've been to the museum twice, by the way. Oh, cool, cool. Fucking awesome. I bet. But um, yeah, I'm. Uh, you're absolutely right. I think Switzerland is one of the best countries when it comes to, uh, what's that saying? Another saying like. Um, uh, the profit in your own country thing right <laughs> don't uh, recognize is, it yeah right and it's switzerland is is like probably one of the best when it comes to that because it's always been like that and and um with music as well i think like there's fucking celtic frost who basically invented black metal style and and uh did a lot for the extreme music scene Mm -hmm. And uh, in Switzerland, they were really not recognized that hmm. very well. And so weird. Yeah, but but I don't know where that comes from, really. We well, have, it's like uh, that's like the uh, that's kind of like with the invention of rock music. It's like America had the blues with the, with the real blues guys, the black blues players, yeah. and the you know people in the UK discovered that stuff. And America hadn't the, the mainstream of Amer white America didn't discover the blues until the Rolling Stones and bands like that. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, the kinks and all these, all these rock bands, the Beatles brought it back to America, like showed Americans, like we're, we're making, we're basing our music on these blues players that came from your country and you guys don't even listen to it. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's like a weird self-hatred thing. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> might be i don't know like <laughs> although like with switzerland i think it's more more of a uh there is a very conventional way of doing things here and and like there's the normal way and there's the unex unaccept unaccepted mm. way and and i guess you're the outcast either or you're the normal guy hmm. that's um, weird like i i always 95 think percent of... of the people are the normal guys obviously yeah, I think of, you know, Switzerland is just this super kind of liberal place, but it sounds that's kind of a no, conservative no, perspective. No, no, no. no? Uh, not at all. I mean, in the, in the area <laughs> I live, we have uh, more of a left wing go, uh, uh, power going on here in my area. Uh, probably one of the more progressive areas in Switzerland, but there's a lot of places like a lot of these, you know, small town farmer kind mm. of rednecky kind of attitude and and uh they have a lot of power in switzerland still it's so interesting and, yeah it's interesting it's like i mean it's, a, it's the same anywhere and i know and i know that's what's so weird it's just like yeah people are just and switzerland people. is yeah true <laughs> but uh switzerland has never been like a white widespread um uh, country for for art i guess Right. Even though there is there is like gems, absolute gems, and it's also in philosophy and also in, in poetry and, and um, psychology, of course. But uh, yeah, it, it was all, always we even have the fucking guy who basically discovered LSD, haven't we? Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't I forgot he was Swiss. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, like, he actually came from Basel as well. 
Um, amazing. Thing, uh, one of my band members, uh, he works in, in, in a laboratory, uh, his day job. And uh, one time he, he actually worked for like a couple of days in the same uh, laboratory, which was used by Hoffman to when he discovered LSD. Oh, how cool. <laughs> That's a cool story, actually. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, like apart from from those gems, I think, um, yeah, I mean, saying in, in Switzerland, saying to people like I'm a musician and an artist and they basically think like, oh, OK, so you're a guy who doesn't want to work and uh, probably gets money from the government. Wow. It's like art support or whatever. That's so weird. But, yeah. I, I, Every time I'm looking for for uh, apartments to rent, uh, I always have to tell them like I'm I'm a multimedia designer or something like right, that. Right, right. You can never ever tell that you're a musician because you're never ever gonna get a place to. <laughs> well, you you do uh like uh client work and stuff too, right? You kind of do commercial yeah. work, so but it's like I do a little bit of everything to be honest. Yeah, I mean, is that just? You support yourself by just kind of doing whatever you have to do within what you do. That sounds like a prostitute. <laughs> that's what I do, man. <laughs> that's what every every artist. No, I know absolutely, does. absolutely. That's what I'm doing, <laughs> basically. I mean, um, by now it's gotten a bit better, but I've had I've had definitely had uh, one or two years, uh, especially one year where I really had to. Um, basically had enough money to pay the rent at the end of the uh, of the month and then had no clue how to pay the, the next rent yeah that's the story of my I've life these, yeah well <laughs> i guess a lot of artists know it very well yeah and it, it's not cool but um by now it's gotten a lot better and i'm very grateful for that and and i just found ways i, I guess in in that uh regard i'm, I'm i've grown to be become a, a survivor i guess because yeah, right <clears throat> everything is still better like everything you can do on your own is still better no matter what you do than working for some asshole you you hate yeah and i've sure. done that for like 10 years and and i'm fucking done with that i'm not gonna return to that ever yeah and uh so yeah i'm i've, I've started doing uh, skull carvings and bone art stuff like that a couple mm -hmm. of years ago yeah i saw that those are cool yeah, thanks, man. I've, I've st stopped a little bit doing that stuff because there wasn't so much, um, so much, uh, you know, requests in, in the past year. But um, yeah, I still like doing that. I did one for Bill Ellis, actually, as a gift. Just oh, cool. Uh, as a gift to say thank you because uh, he supported yeah. me a couple of times. Oh, really? Yeah, his stuff's awesome. I, I, I'm trying to get his attention some way because I want to get him on the podcast. But he doesn't yeah, follow, fucking follow hell, me. Really I don't think to. I don't think he knows knows me at all. So oh, that's a shame. I'm, I mean, I would still reach out to him. I mean, by saying he supported me a couple of times, that's probably way too much, like way too too uh, overspoken. But uh, <laughs> when I when I discovered his stuff and he was making a post about NFTs and and I contacted him and and asked him a little bit about the whole stuff because I had no clue what to do with it. And uh, yeah, he was really kind and and oh, that's and, cool. Uh, answered right away and he's he's always doing his um those competitions which which right. are fucking cool and and that's his way of supporting you know anybody who's who's into the space and who's trying to do something right and i think that's great and and uh yeah people in his position i think should should do should do more to help small time artists as well and yeah that, that was my way of, of saying thanks for that that's I cool to him but <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe i'm gonna do for, one for you one time as well <laughs> i love it i love i've i got lots of bones around here i love bones we all love bones so how, yeah. how so what you know i don't know if this is too uh <laughs> so funny i keep getting notifications see sorrows meeting in five minutes because <laughs> 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 we started earlier that was my phone going off earlier oh, too, was, right, was, right. was getting ready for that uh but um so i mean what's your what is your if you don't mind me asking i'm just curious like how where are you making your money it's like because it's like me i'm like i'm probably 75 percent web sales 
and and which is prints and merchandise and stuff like that mm-hmm. and probably or maybe maybe 60 percent web sales and 30 percent commissions and gallery shows maybe so what about the nfts and then the nf well the nfts have been yeah that's only been like for the last four months though that's been i mean i'm sort of I just like getting 50 percent or so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wish it to you. It, it's it it did really well until I minted this last one, and I haven't really got any action on it because it's like I I came in when the market was still kind of hot, yeah, and yeah. so I set this price of three point one five ETH that mm-hmm. the, the last two sold for, which was a lot, and so now the market's down, but I can't. I don't. Yeah, I feel I like I can't. Yeah, I don't feel like lower, lowering my price is a good idea. So I just no. posted it at that price. And, I, and I'll sit on it because I got other ways of making money. So I don't feel like I've fully done it long enough to really count it. To me, it's mm-hmm. like extra. It's extra money because um, it's just so new and I haven't really factored in everything. It's yeah, not yeah. something I can count on like the other stuff. It's like I know I can make a certain amount for my website and stuff. So do you have like a percentage of how much you're making where? Because you're obviously you're making the ends meet your ends meet and you've yeah. got music and you've got your your nfts and you've got your album covers and you got this bone art so freelancer like... bone stuff um, <laughs> social media management for a band as well oh okay so so there's a lot of stuff and 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 um i've got some shops as well <laughs> really what do you, what do you, it just what sounds do you mean? ridiculous like uh online web stuff you mean i mean for, for for the bands of course and also like the i got my own saras shop with like a couple of shirts shirt right. designs and stuff like that but that was quite quiet more or less but yeah i mean I, i'd say it's it's mostly um more or less half half uh, with band and and um the design stuff hmm, okay. it used to be like it used to be like 75 percent band i guess before wow. COVID started. that's yeah that's, i mean that's pretty successful well yeah i mean it's not too bad to be especially honest, as, but... as hard as it is to make it as a band i mean that's yeah pretty, pretty major so is it from touring mostly from touring and the web shop i'd say and and um yeah i mean Nothing from streaming, obviously. Right, yeah. <laughs> streaming rates are absolutely r- ridiculous, really. So but, uh, we, Yeah, we get some good royalties. I mean, I get some good royalties by now as well from the label. Um, the past two years or so, started to to kind of kick off a little bit. Oh, good. What's the, band, always, the, what's the band's sorry? name? What's the name of the band? Uh, that's the big question now. Huh? <laughs> or you don't want to say it? You don't have I mean, to, I but it's you, just. I, I sent you one of the albums. It's it's called Shamash. It's it's just promotion on the. Uh, that's all. It's like a, it's promoting the music to an uh, an audience that would probably like it. That's why I ask. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but uh, it's up to I, you. You don't want to say. I know you have a thing about. Oh, I, I said it already. You probably uh, overheard it. Oh, okay, okay. How do you how do you say it again? <laughs> now I'm gonna make. It's called change. Shamash. Shamash. Okay. What does that right. mean? Uh, it's a Babylonian sun god. Oh, cool! Basically, I mean, it's 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 got different like uh, kind of interpretations and roots and stuff, as it always is with with mythology. Right. But yeah, that's like the the basis of it, and uh, um, yeah, it's 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 grown quite a bit over the past ten years. But it was a long way as well, and uh, um, I, I could imagine you you would like some of that stuff. So, so you have it's very diverse like it's it's very it's got a couple of different sides to it different um experimental styles and uh yeah i think i mean you being all into tool and stuff like that i mean it's not nearly as progressive as tool obviously or technical but um it's it's got some of these vibes as well and uh i, I definitely check it out yeah i like it yeah, I will for sure. I mean, you, you uh, <clears throat> what, 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 how would you categorize it? Um, yeah. The what do most people, how do most, how do most people categorize it? Put it that way, not what you would categorize it as. The label always categorized it as, as avant garde black metal. Oh, okay. That's Experimental interesting. Experimental black metal, something like that. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, li- I like a lot of the, uh, 
I just am not. I'm not that into black metal because of the the a lot of the vocals. I'm just I can't get, I can't get past the uh, the the. I can we, understand that, and it's like, but and, uh, there's and a it, lot of clean vocals as well. You st- you sh- should still check it out. I know, I know. It's like usually almost ninety nine percent of the time, someone will send me some black metal, and I'm like, the music is great, and then they start singing. And I'm like, to me, it's like, <laughs> it just sounds like. <sighs> it's like it's like just like in in injecting static in and it's like i get that it adds it it matches the feel i do understand that it just doesn't it just seems like a wasted opportunity to me because it's monosyllabic it doesn't have much melody and it's like it could be adding another layer and i'm just like such a melody person i'm very you know i was raised on like pop rock and roll music from the yeah, 70s, you're, you're 70s and this, right punk you're stuff from the t- 80s. It's like one generation b- before that kind of stuff. totally yeah 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 it was like you know i was in iron maiden and and that kind of metal oh, you I know what i mean iron maiden still like one of my god bands really yeah they're amazing um acdc and stuff like that but that's not really anyway but 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 uh uh you know we I'm actually all, played I'm... in la just uh before covid like, oh really a couple where? of months before COVID started to hit, uh, we played, uh, I where mean, at? not directly in LA. It, it was uh, Santa Ana, I think it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, that's like Orange County. Was it Santa Ana? <laughs> Fucking hell. I think it was. That's anyway, kind of like, like the it, conservative part of LA is Orange County. Really? Which is funny. Yeah. I was told it was more like the Latino uh, area there. <laughs> It could be, it could be. I, I mean, it was, it was quite close to the to the to all the ports, I guess. Okay. Like yeah. Beaches. It wasn't it wasn't Long Beach. Yeah, not really. Let me just check. I'm just you know, it, L.A. is gigantic. It's so huge. There's so yeah, many yeah, t- so many different parts of it. But well, you're gonna have to hit me up when you come out again, if you guys come out. I think it was the first and the last time. <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't go over too well or what? I mean, it it, it went great actually, and oh. the response was insanely good as well, and it was a lot of fun. But uh, the the working visas is just a fucking total oh, insane really? nightmare. Seriously, like it was absolute hell to get that stuff for oh, just man. one show, and we were there like four days or so. <laughs> We had to go through so much hassle and we paid like, I don't know, 40, 4,000 bucks or something. Oh my God. That's ridiculous. Seriously. It was so bad. And um, yeah, that just basically destroyed all, all, um, you know, all uh, motivation to ever do that again. Right. And I guess you can always just uh, try to get into the country without, without the work, work visa as a tourist. But you know, if, if if they cover it up, then you got a lot of problems. And yeah, yeah, and then you'll get kicked out. Not and never it. be able to come back again, or something. Or yeah, you don't want to mess with that stuff. No. Oh, no. so so that that's that's an achievement. I mean, my son is a drummer. I don't know if you know, my son son's like a drummer. And um, I saw one, one. I saw a post uh, one time. He posted with like a video England. of his band. <laughs> yeah, he. Well, yeah, I mean, he he's he's in a bunch. You know how it is. He's in a bunch of bands and. Mm-hmm. Um, He's touring with the English Beat, that uh, '80s, '80s UK band called the the Beat or the English Beat, and um, okay, he's, he's, what the you know the English Beat that or they were called the Beat in the UK. They were like they had a bunch of hit songs. Like you probably, well, I don't know, I don't know how old you are, but but they're popular. I mean, people know their songs. Like, uh, but they're from the '80s. Yeah, they're from the '80s, and he's touring with them. Wow yeah yeah he he's the, the youngest in the band <laughs> they're all young the, there's only one the only main oh, really? the only guy in the band is this is the main singer guy you know and he's old <laughs> oh okay yeah. yeah so it's all a bunch of young guys at him but um but he's you know he he's a that's how he makes a living it's like he'll do when he's not in playing uh on tours and stuff he'll they'll do like odd jobs like working at a you know cleaning weed he knows a guy that's got this, this <laughs> place where they just like which is you know, now legal right? trimming yeah, yeah like... trimming weed and stuff but um you know that's his main thing and 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 it's 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 a really difficult living it's really difficult yeah. but but he's 
he loves it. He just loves it. He loves playing. So, um, you know, but it's great that he, that that it's possible to do it. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it, it takes a lot from you, but also it gives you a lot of freedom, and and I value freedom much more than than you know security or whatever. And, right. And to me, it wasn't a question. I've worked for like seven years in a row uh, for two different assholes. I just fucking detested, man. I just <laughs> fucking hated everything about them terrible what people. kind of work what kind of work was it oh it was the first one was in a guitar shop oh man the second yeah one was more of a male uh, like like a mail order guitar shop like a big time thing one of the biggest in switzerland hmm. and, and the boss of that place was just fucking ah oh, nightmare really like ah oh, fucking terrible and, <laughs> and uh, yeah after i was done with that i I just told myself, like, there's no way I'm ever going to go back into that world again. No matter what I'm going to do, I'm just going to figure anything out and, and it's going to work out. And, and it did. Yeah. It was, uh, sometimes it was a close call, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's I always uh, motivate people um, to to try and pursue that freedom if, if they want to go that way. And if they have like the, you know, the means and the talent to do something like that. In, right. in any kind of artistic way you just pursue that and i mean if you don't then you're probably going to hate yourself for not trying it 40 40 years from now or 20 years from now so yeah i, I, I know i would and uh yeah i mean i know people yeah i know the best advice i can give yeah i know people who worked in effects their whole lives hating it not being into it and then just you know didn't didn't do anything it's like waited for their retirement to come around and yeah it's like you're gonna wait until the last few years of your life to do what you want to do it's yeah like, right and and then you're so, you're so fucked up by that job life by doing <laughs> no. that fucking same thing for the past 40 years that your body is just probably gonna shut down as soon as as he as it knows like the time has come like right <laughs> your thing is fulfilled now your purpose is done you worked your whole life and now you can fuck off yeah that's, yeah that's not how it should be man absolutely not yeah so how did you uh, uh, okay so you that's pretty amazing that's amazing you've been able to do that so um what what where does the visual component come in have you been doing that the whole time like visual art along with no no not at all Actually, it was, that's a funny story. Like I, I went to, um, I started a shitty apprenticeship when I was 16, I think. And uh, I canceled it after half a year because it just didn't work out at all. And uh, then I started. Um, what, what, for what apprenticeship for what? Um, it, how do I say that? Like, fucking hell, I don't know the job description. Like it was a uh, interiors um, decorator. We would call it, I guess. Oh, okay. Going into people's homes, like, putting uh, carpets on, yeah, on the floor yeah and, yeah uh, interior decoration stuff like that and yeah okay yeah i fucking hated it and, and people were awful as well and, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> i guess i just don't do very well with bosses yeah but, yeah um yeah then i canceled that and i wanted to go to art school which i tried but before the apprenticeship uh, i tried to get in but uh, i didn't didn't get in because i guess i was too bad or whatever and um then I tried the second time and I got in and I did that for two years. And um, then I just had like a kind of a mental breakdown around 20 years old and just had no clue what to do with myself. Got in like to like a deep de depression hole. Uh, I was just pretty fucked up by that time. And um, then I started a, a new apprenticeship after I found myself back into life again more or less and uh, I started working in that guitar shop uh, which was kind of uh, already the time when I like started to to have a band like more serious in a more serious way I've, I've had my first bands in a, since I was 16 I think mm -hmm. and by the time of 20 I knew like that this was kind of the thing I wanted to pursue even though it was kind of pointless making a living out of that but I, I just knew like that's what I have to do like that's what I want to do that's the only thing I can do right apparently right yeah yeah and uh, that, like there was a lot of passion and fire burning for that stuff and um so yeah I thought like told myself like if if I 
need a fucking job then at least something that i can that is related in some yeah. way to 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 music and and that was the only thing i could found, find which would make sense and uh yeah I've, I've actually learned a lot from from i think i was there for four years and uh, the guy who owned it it was just me and him and he was such a fucking prick wow <laughs> but he also was like a professional musician at, at the side as well like he had uh, the shop and also his his music career mm -hmm. which which was really bad <laughs> but he always thought like like he, he always thought he's like the big shot or something which right. doesn't mean shit in switzerland <laughs> playing with some shitty pop acts or shit like that <laughs> and um yeah I've, I've i've learned a lot from that time too I've, I've learned a lot to you know stand up for myself and um uh dealing with customers all day which which oh, is yeah. just fucking horrible and I've, I've learned a lot of you know um self-consciousness and and pushing through and and learning to say no and stuff like that mm -hmm. and um yeah after that and and on the side i just made music and and developed worked on on my band started a new band uh by the end of that apprenticeship which is the band nowadays like my main band and i knew when i started that that it's gonna it's gonna have to become serious like i'm, I'm gonna do everything it takes to make this work and so i did and i guess it worked out to some extent at least and uh by the time of the second al album i think it was that band like 2014 around something like that um one of the designers i've worked with on for the for the artwork of the album which is actually a fucking great designer um, you really should check out this stuff and it's called metastasis his project okay uh he's from france um you'd fucking love his stuff oh, he's, he's send, me, send me a link when, when you get yeah, a chance i will i will after the chat yeah i even thought like asking him if 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 he knows your stuff and he, i think he would make a great partner to to join oh. the chat as well oh cool not in the in the nft aspect <laughs> <laughs> but definitely about art in general right but anyways like um he kind of motivated me to to um he may be a good deal about an artwork and and i just didn't have enough money to pay the layout and i just said like okay you're gonna do the artwork and i'm gonna make the layout the rest of the layout of the, for the album uh, out of what you're doing and i had i pretty much had abandoned all like visual art stuff by by that time and and it was like really starting a new completely i mean i I've worked with Photoshop for quite a few years back then already, just, you know, playing around and stuff, but nothing serious. And yeah, that, that layout was basically like the first thing that got me back into visual stuff, like, like figuring all that shit out and, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> making it work, actually. And uh, he said, like, at the end of it, he said, yeah, well, you did a good job. And, and that gave me kind of the motivation to to start thinking again like maybe that's something i should i should get into it uh, get into again as, as like a side hustle or whatever it can mm -hmm. do any harm and i did and a friend of mine from another band in switzerland uh, asked me for a t-shirt design and for a logo design and figured that stuff out and that was kind of the way like things got rolling mm. and yeah there's like more people came and uh, a lot of friends came for jobs and that's how it developed over the years and then I guess like I don't know like four years or so three four years back I started being more serious again about like I started to do these nameless pieces mm -hmm. yeah those are really cool yeah I mean those were the, kind of the start for me to, to oh the nameless are the the photoshop ones yeah right Which are really cool yeah <laughs> thanks man <laughs> <laughs> no there's these other ones that you have that are really another series too uh, that, that i thought it was never mind keep going keep going so yeah i mean that was basically the start for me to to i had no idea how how, how i would make money from that stuff back then mm -hmm. I did and this is just our design and, stuff. and this is photoshop only you hadn't you hadn't been doing 3d yet right no, no, I started 3D like uh, roughly two and a half years ago or so, I think. Oh, wow. 
yeah that was a big journey man <laughs> yeah yeah it's i remember when i was first learning 3d yeah like, yeah you know it is you make sure <laughs> i mean back then it was even worse i can imagine very yeah bad. yeah yeah it's a lot I'd, worse probably it's it's but it's still like just your brain feels like it's going to explode every day when you're learning this stuff it's like, <laughs> I mean, too much to I remember felt, too much to remember but uh lucky lucky enough there's all those youtube tutorials by now yeah yeah you can basically find a tutorial on how to open a file in photoshop or something like that there's a tutorial yep. for everything i know it's amazing yeah and and that's how i really learned that stuff like out of some whatever mood i thought at some point sitting at home in front of my desk like uh what is that 3d thing about like i saw these bill ellis pieces and stuff and i thought like fucking hell that shit looks amazing and, yeah um, this stuff is so cool i mean i've been into video games all my life but i never had any clue how this stuff is made and and um so i started getting curious and and i just started following up some some basic tutorial on on youtube and and what program what uh blender because it was free. Oh, okay so you're is that and what you still... do most of your stuff on yeah absolutely that's what i, I mean wanna... by now i that's what i, I, I use use eventually it's fucking awesome man i mean there, it, it, it's very complicated and very not user friendly i would say especially not beginner friendly but yeah yeah on the other hand, like which 3D 3D program is beginner friendly? I mean, no, it's yeah, it's just, like none of them are user friendly. Stuff, yeah. <laughs> They're yeah, all right. complicated. It's like I only know Lightwave, which is another weird one, obscure one, but it works. It's just yeah, they're, they're all complicated. I just I like that Blender has so many more resources because it's a free program. So there's just yeah. just tons of videos out there to learn. So and also it basically it, it, it can do anything like it, it right. can do sculpting, it can do rendering, it can do um, you know composition and everything, and video animation, rigging, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's basically an all in one. But it, everything it does, it does very in, in a very complicated way. When when other programs are probably much easier to use and, and yeah and like better in results, like ZBrush for example. Yeah, Which that's is, ZBrush is probably the most user friendly, and even that one for sculpting is it's yeah, yeah, insane. Um, and I've gotten into it like a year ago, so a bit. How long? And, how long were you studying Blender before you felt like you got pretty good at it? Like, how long did it take? I still, I, I still feel like sometimes I still feel I have absolutely no clue about <laughs> the program, and, and I just have my little workflow that. That I right. figured out by by the, those two years now, and and everything else, I just keep my distance and still afraid of it as fuck. But um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I don't know. Like I I can do some stuff, and and I feel pretty comfortable with with certain things. Um, and then there's other things I I really have no clue about. And that, that I've tried them a few times, like fire animations and shit mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And, and they just never work and it, it's always like like something doesn't work properly or like described in the tutorial or anything and i'm just like anytime i try this stuff i'm just like fuck this shit <laughs> <laughs> i know it's so frustrating yeah but i guess i mean i don't know i'd say about two years or so or, or at least i got pretty good at sculpting quite quickly i started to sculpt a, a human skull like uh, sculpting it from a from a an, an anatomy model I, I own, mm -hmm. and that turned out pretty good. I guess it took me like a couple of months to to get it done, and it's actually still the base model I use for most of my stuff when I use skulls. Yeah, it's still <laughs> the same model. That's I mean, cool. I always rework it in a mm -hmm. bit like a bit differently, but I still use that very same model, which is cool. I think. Yeah, I do too. So, and, so how did uh, you, yeah, how did this, so how did this translate into NFTs? Yeah, my, I mean, for, for me, it was kind of a funny coincidence that I started to get into 3D uh, right about, uh, to me, I've, it was kind of um, a good preparation for getting into the, the NFT stuff, even though that wasn't like, I've never heard about that before until after one year later or so after I started 3D and and that was just a very good coincidence if you believe in coincidences that I started that same thing just before COVID hit right. and I basically just at the very fucking exact right moment I started uh, 
basically developing a, a, a new business model for myself to make money. And uh, when the, the whole band income just vanished from one day to another, right. which was insane, by the way, like it was, I was frightened as fuck for a moment. Yeah. And lucky enough on, by the way, lucky enough, uh, uh, the Swiss uh, government put up great support for, for art, for artists oh, when wow. COVID started which was quite surprising considering yeah. <laughs> how, how conservative and, and non-artsy Switzerland can be. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was really surprised by that uh, positively, of course. I'm super grateful for that. But uh, yeah, mo a moment I got, uh, I got really frightened about how, how I would pay my next rent and stuff. Right. And um, then, yeah, that NFT thing started and, and it took me a long time and, until, uh, you know, I got some sales like a couple of months when everybody else around me I felt like was already getting rich. <laughs> uh -huh. It was just like uh, I, I started it uh, in March uh, 21. Okay. Which was really just the peak when, when people could sell like photographs of, of their, I don't know, toilets for like 2000 bucks or something like right. that. I mean, just absolutely bonkers. If yeah, you think about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing um, about, that's the thing about one, I'll, I'll let you keep going in a second, but that's the thing about um, AI coming in, you know, and it's like low effort and you could sell it as an NFT. Some of the stuff people sell as NFTs are like stick figures. So it's like, it's, a, yeah. it's the same kind yeah, of yeah. low effort and Absolutely. those things sell. So it's like, why not make something that looks like, something. yeah, at least it looks cool. Anyway, continue, continue. So yeah, I mean, I started uh, the NFT stuff in March 21. And um, yeah, it took me a couple of months until I got my first sale on Tezos, I, I think. Okay, and you started uh, on Tezos? No, I started on, on uh, Ethereum, but okay. um, just started trying uh, a lot of different things and nothing seemed to work out mm -hmm. for a long time. And um, it was all very random though. I didn't really know what to do with it and, and just, you know, as anybody else trying trying to figure shit out how come you didn't um, give up i know some i know a lot of people that have tried and just oh, work just out right a, away and they just gave up never went back to it no i couldn't i couldn't have lived with that i, I hate <laughs> going up seriously but yeah I'm one time I, I started getting into screen printing and i bought a <laughs> lot of fucking <laughs> seriously expensive equipment around 2016 or so I think it was and I wanted to start like a, a t-shirt uh, business you know mm -hmm. but it was just it was just impossible to do really like I've, it took me like a couple of months until I, I started being able to print a couple of shirts but they it was just I, I just couldn't do it it just didn't work out yeah and and I hated myself for that like <laughs> that, that moment having to admit to yourself like okay you were just not good enough for that and or you just didn't have the skills and you put all this money in and now yeah. you have to sell it and, and just salvage the last couple of bucks you can from that from it's that the, failure that's how it was with my my band because i had a band for or different variations for 10 years i was trying to make it as a musician that was like my focus from 17 to i don't know 27 or late 20s or whatever and it was so and that's a long time man. i know i know and it's like that must you know, have been a bigger pill as, as well yeah yeah it was so painful because I, I mean i i thought that the music it went through like a lot of changes and stuff but you know i still think the music's really good and i do i uh had a uh it was like right before the internet though it was like it was a really weird time i mean i guess we could have and it was not in line, I guess, with what was going on. It wasn't grungy enough, maybe, or something. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jello Biafra liked it a lot. The singer from Dead Kennedy. Oh, really? That, that's one of my claims to fame is that I gave him our last uh, album, and he told me it was really, really good. And he was like, "Why didn't you? You know, like he couldn't understand why we broke up, why we didn't have, you know, have we're doing better." And I was just like. At that point, we had a manager and it was just like, just not working. It just wasn't, it's just like nothing musically. The stuff was, I thought the stuff was really good and um, songwriting and the playing and we had good players and stuff, but it just nothing clicked. 
it just didn't, you know, when you're doing something and it's like the thing doesn't happen, you know, yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've had enough successful things happen in my life mm-hmm. to where it's like, you can see when something's clicking and you're moving right. forward. Absolutely. And then with the band, it was like, it would, you know, you'd get all these opportunities, you play cool shows, but never like a really cool show or a really something that you're like, okay, this is going to be it. It just, everything felt like, it felt like the timing wasn't right. It felt like a lot of things, but, but when I quit, it was so, it was like the first time I ever really tried hard on something and failed is what it was actually. Mm-hmm. Now I think about it, yeah. never even thought, but because it's like, you know, I tried to get into a makeup effects right out of high school. And I did that and became successful on that. Mm-hmm. And um, so it was like, I was used to making it happen. And then it was like, I had this yeah, other right. thing and it's like, right. Uh, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. And I mean, I could have kept going, but I felt, I was like, it's been 10 years and it hasn't happened. So I need to focus on something else. And then that's when I, at the, around the end of the band is when I was, starting to get into 3d animation. Cause I just thought it was so cool. So then I shifted and I put all my attention on digital art and 3d stuff. And I got way into that. And then I couldn't make that work either. I like tried to do like a little business and do effects for some independent movies and stuff. And did a couple of things with that, but just could not make it work. And then I went, and then I was like, you know, and I looked, had no money and I had to go get a job and I got laid off from my effects job. And I, and then I started working at Rick Baker's, which was really good. And, um, but I had to, yeah, he's like the effect, the big effects, biggest effects. Oh yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And so I had to go in like at the, at a lower level than my abilities be though, because I was new. So I'd like just got in cause they needed a painter and just painting base colors, just really basic stuff. But I eventually worked my way into the sculpting department and became like, you know, one of the cool guys or whatever. But um, all that time I was trying to make the digital thing happen and I couldn't do that either. And then I started, I was just like, fuck, fuck all this shit. That's the motivating. What do I really want to do? You know, if I'm going to, what do I really want to do? And it was, and I was like, I just want to be a fine artist. That's really what I want to do. I want to paint. Mm -hmm. Or no, I wanted to sculpt at first. And then I was, and then I did a sculpture and it was like, I can't make a living doing this. It's too expensive. It takes too long. Yeah. So then I started painting and then that started kind of clicking. And, um, but anyway, uh, so I don't know how I, I, I interrupted you. You were, uh, uh, no, I, it was about 3d and stuff. It was the whole, it was the whole thing of, of like, you know, giving up. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 You, you not being able to, uh, uh make the, the NFT printing. stuff work yeah the screen uh, print, yeah 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 i gave okay. that up because i i just knew like that's never gonna happen and it's just like I, it's just not for me and i guess yeah I yeah just figure that out at least which is also <laughs> a good experience i guess and a good lesson yeah you know when when to be defeated i guess you, you gotta know, to know your that. you gotta know your limitations in a way right. what you're suited to and it was funny it's funny when i got into visual art from uh from uh, uh, music, it was like, I was way better at visual art than I was at music, mm-hmm. like as a player, like I was never, I was never like a great lead guitar player. I was, I'm, I'm a good rhythm guitar player and songwriter. I'm a good songwriter, but um, I was never, I never felt as natural on the guitar as I do with drawing or painting or sculpting. And it was just funny coming out of that. I'm like, how did I get so sidetracked from what I really am supposed to be doing? And it's like, cause I love music so much, you know, when you love something and you're a creative person, you want to do the thing that you love. Yeah. I know that feeling is extremely well. Like, <laughs> there's nothing I, I see, which I didn't know before. And, and when there is like that moment of, I want to, I want to be able to do that, yeah. <laughs> that and that and that too. Yeah. Oh, that's cool as well. Right. And, uh, I mean, by now I'm, I'm doing so much different stuff and sometimes I've, I say to myself like it's 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 gotten ridiculous really you have to stop starting <laughs> new stuff and i don't know like i guess that's just who i am by now and, and that's why i written i've written into my twitter bio like jack of many trades yeah because right <laughs> i've accepted by now that i i just can't be that one thing that that person that just focuses on perfection of one thing right. and i have i have a lot of respect of for for people who actually can do that like 
Bill Ellis, for example, is, is or, or Necro, the, these people are, are great examples for like, you know, taking one thing out of like a thousand of things, thousands of things which you could yeah, make right. with the skills you have, but you, you decide to take that one little thing and drive it to perfection right which, right which is great and and i i i really yeah i have a lot of respect for that but to me it's just like if i do the same thing like over and over and over and over again at some point i'm, I'm just i don't know I, I don't feel it anymore and i need to step back from it and do something else right and by now my my days are usually like i, I wake up in the morning and I sit on, on my computer and i think like okay I don't even think about it. I, I just open some project and start working on it. And and right. the other the next day it might be a song or it might be like a different project. So it's just like, you know, I I just do whatever the instinct tells me to do, and and I guess I just have to be fine with that and right. um, live with the fact that I don't have like that one specific style in art. Right. Uh, yeah, I guess that's all right. Well, yeah, and. But also, you know, you're pretty young, right? I mean, you seem pretty young. I feel like a lot old, older than I actually am. <laughs> but what, just to be curious, uh, how, how old do you think I am? <laughs> That's a good question. Let's see. Mm. I don't know. Late 20s. <laughs> 30, early 30s, maybe. Yeah, I wish. No, it's getting to 34 and 35 in January. Actually. Oh, okay. So you're getting to, you're getting to that point there. Cause, cause yeah. what, what I noticed was what I, I guess my point was, um, uh, there was a point like the point where I focused on the fine art, the painting was like, mm -hmm. I, I had to make, and that was 33. That was when I was turned 33 is when I decided okay. I was going to start painting. And That's also quite like a, a late point to, yeah, to start totally. a completely new business, yeah. which you are yeah. dependent on, like with, with your rent and everything and your yeah. family. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, I did seven years. I was like, for the first seven years, I was working in effects still. So I had like the day job that was paying. Oh, well, yeah. All right. You okay. know, but so I was just like working two jobs, basically teaching myself to paint and stuff and mm -hmm. building, building my career. But, um, uh, but there was that point when I started painting and I, and I realized, you know, when I really kind of ask myself, what do I want to do? What seems like it'd be the most fun thing to, to do without any financial considerations. And it was just like, you know, I want to paint monster stuff. I want to create monster stuff as fine art. And, um, and so maybe it's because the age or, or whatever, but I, I remember saying, okay, I really need to like drop the digital stuff, drop, you know, the mm. music stuff, drop everything else and just focus on this one thing. Because, because again, I was kind of doing a similar thing because I'm, I have all these very interests. I get really interested in different, mm -hmm. different things. Yeah, and, yeah. I've noticed before. Yeah. So I, um, I really was like, I may, it was a, it was something I had to, to, to decide to do, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I felt like with monster stuff, I wouldn't get bored with it because, it seems like the most fun thing to do <laughs> that I can think of. So I think I can keep doing this and do variations of it to keep myself satisfied. Yeah. I mean, your work never, it never looks boring or bored to me. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, I'm it's complete opposite. Yeah. If it's, I, I think I enjoy it. I still enjoy it. Like um, anyway. Uh, but so, so, so how did the, how you got successful with nfts i mean did it become how did it go i mean i've, I've had a moment last year when when it really took off for just a moment just a, like that little glimpse uh -huh. which gave me like that that hope that sh stuff is not going to be as shitty anymore financially. <laughs> and then it just vanished from one day to another really which was how long funny. did it yeah, how absolutely. long did it kind of last maybe two months or so okay and you were, I mean, were I'm you... doing these scalopticon stuff oh yeah like yeah 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 all, those uh, yeah those are the things i was talking about that, that yeah that, that's those are one really of the cool things. yeah thanks yeah <laughs> i mean i still like them a lot but yeah. um i love the the presentation is great too thank you it. man yeah really that cool means a lot that's i think those were the first things i saw actually uh, yeah that makes sense you know um 
it's they're very graphic you know i, I like it this is super cool yeah i mean it, it's basically like made to be a collectible kind of thing right right yeah. they're almost like collectors they remind me of like collect art cards yeah right that, that was know? basically the, 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 the you know the, the inspiration for doing mm. that stuff and uh, when i made the first of these like it, like i made one series of of like you know um human human history human evolution skulls mm -hmm. yeah from like the, the first kind of ape right uh, until until the human skull and um or humanoid and um those didn't really work out i didn't sell any and and then i started to do the next one which was more like of a you know kind of had some ornament stuff and and and, and it was like a bit of different style style and one of these sold immediately and then like from there it, it just took off pretty much and there was like a collector's thing uh, involved like you know like a reward system where there's like gonna be a one one edition at the very end of of all these editions like 25 oh. editions completely oh cool and and uh like there's only gonna be one guy who's gonna have that very last reward and it turned out it's gonna it it was two in the end. I decided to to reward both people who actually collected all oh, of them. That's cool. One of them actually was Damn Engine, which which was on your podcast before. Oh, as well. cool! <laughs> yeah, he's, he's great. a great guy. Yeah, super cool guy. Yeah, absolutely. I love his stuff as well. But yeah, yeah, he's awesome. And um, yeah, that really kicked off after a couple of drops and and those uh, those drops like started to sell out in like two two hours or so like 10 editions or sometimes 15 wow or something wow and so that I must have been like, good. Hell, okay that's great <laughs> pretty good money right yeah actually I'm, i made some good money last year from from these and um then at some point it, it just uh, like from one day to another all the 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 major collectors who always like collected all of them were just like oh no sorry i'm done and i can't invest anymore and i'm mm. not selling anything either and blah right and uh yeah that was like the kind of the point when it came to a halt like really from one day to another and that i was baffled really like what the hell <laughs> but, but as you know as as it comes it goes and and i guess that's that's what you have to deal with with the, within the nft and the crypto space and that's like the daily business well, I mean, even this is this is the same in the art world too. You know, I've I've yeah, had true. I've had collectors who are like, I can't can't collect your art anymore. Like like they just <laughs> you know, it's like I've I have you know. There's a point where, especially with physical art, it's it's like there's a point where you can't keep collecting because you have too much. You know, mm -hmm. so so I've had I have had you know collectors that gave me like two or three years they would collect my work consistently and then they're just gone you know and uh it's just part of the part of the deal and then you, you know yeah, you, so absolutely. you're always kind of trying to find new collectors as well uh, you know cultivate new collectors and it just mm -hmm. takes time and then and then on top of it the in the end nft space it's just like all these up uh, this other layers of weirdness on top of it it's like the yeah, it's so like the regular better. art market but just weirder and crazier <laughs> <laughs> and and more anonymous i guess yeah. <laughs> that's There's yeah so that's much freaking strange people behind those pseudonyms on twitter <laughs> where you sometimes think like who the fuck is this guy right like, like what the fuck does this guy look in person and yeah there's and, so much there's a lot of anonymity too with even yeah. with the with the artists and with the collectors and the, it, that's one thing yeah, i wasn't I, expecting uh, cause I've always been just open, used my, my own name, never had that, like hide behind the persona thing. I was always like out there. That was just what I had the old to, school way. Yeah. It's like what I had to offer. It was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to be interactive with people. I'm going to be active, talk to people on social media. And that was kind of Which my is great, by the way, I, th I think like you, you just don't have to hide behind anything yeah. and. I just, and I felt, it felt to me and I, it's like, I get it. And it sounds really fun to have like a, an artist name and be kind of anonymous. I get it. And it sounds like I could see totally getting into that. It, it would be fun. Like as a, as a, I don't know, almost like as a performance art 
type thing in a way or as a way to play yeah yeah absolutely i, I mean th there's definitely people in in the space who are big time doing that very right. successfully which yeah. i think is cool like if 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 it's well done and if there's like an actual character to it i i actually like that kind of yeah thing. yeah and so i i totally get it but for me i felt like for whatever reason i felt like it would be disingenuous like it's not something i would do as an artist it just mm -hmm. felt like that wouldn't be me you know i'm more of like a just an open person i guess it's just very down to earth guy i'd, I'd say and, uh, yeah I, I guess but it's just it's like it just felt like i felt like you know after going through all that di different stuff trying bands being in makeup effects and doing trying to be a 3d animation house and this and that it's like art was fine art was like okay this is where i'm gonna totally be myself 100 percent, totally be authentic create from my heart 100 percent, not you know just totally keep it real and so it just seemed natural to not have like a persona or a weird name and i already have kind of a weird name anyway so it right fun. i just <laughs> wanted to say you got the luck that you already have like the artist name to be yeah my yeah. girlfriend recently <laughs> told me like what really that's his name <laughs> i've been asked that so many times like if if it's a, a fake name and i'm like no <laughs> <laughs> i just got lucky i guess it's weird but um so 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 anyway, yeah, so so that was, that was a weird thing coming into the Twitter space and the NFT space and seeing all the the whole thing about like doxing, people not wanting to people know their real name. And, ha and it was like, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there's a reason behind some of it. Yeah. And, and I'm totally on board with that because yeah. I was actually a bit like so negatively surprised that we're going to do like the, the video thing today because I thought it's just going to be audio. Oh. And I was like, oh, fuck, no, I'm going to have to show my face. Well, I mean, I could, I could not, I could not post it on YouTube if you, if you want. No, it's, no, it's, it's mainly it's for the audio. The YouTube's like, an, and it's, it's like, I'm building the YouTube channel. It's only got a couple hundred followers. It's not a, it's not a big thing, but I could not, I could leave it off if you want. No, no, it's, it's totally fine. It's, uh, you got to face your fears, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely one of them. Yeah. <laughs> totally cool. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so it was weird seeing, you know, collectors buying from you and then not knowing their names. You know, it's like their real names. I'm just not used to. It's a different world. And uh, it, there's it, this one guy. Sorry to interrupt you. There is this this one guy um, who's calling himself unknown collector. Uh huh. He's a big name by now, and uh, awesome guy by the way. And uh, he was the one that. Uh, collected my f f uh, first stuff on foundation and um he chose that name to be i mean yeah the name is program he just doesn't want to be known right he doesn't even want to do chats because people could recognize his voice i guess and, right uh, yeah i mean i totally respect that but he's yeah. extremely supportive of the of the space and, and it's kind of cool it's sort of cool it's kind of cool to be like an anonymous person that's just supporting artists. You, I mean, I, I, I get it. I totally get it. It's like, I, yeah, there's always some kind of, of mystery spark behind. Yeah. Me and it's funny. I feel like I'm sort of from a, I'm just like from an older generation. So this is a new thing for me, but at the time for me to be like the open guy, that was a new thing. And like, that was a new generation thing when I started like, the artists before me were very mysterious. You couldn't get in touch with them. It was like, I'm talking about like, you know, 70s, 80s, 60s, mm -hmm. even. It was like the artist was was like kind of kept by the gallery and kept yeah. from direct connection with the fans. So to be like, to be online and to be connected with your collectors was like, and to be open and talking to people was like kind of the new thing. Mm -hmm. and, and like a on a, on more of like a cutting edge way for an for a fine artist to be and now in this space it's like the opposite kind of and it's just now i'm like feeling like the old guy and this is the new thing and it's all good i don't give a shit but it's just it was interesting um just how interesting how things uh change like that it was one more thing to get used to but that's what's fun and exciting about it it's so different and weird i like that 
you know it's just so honest i i fucking hated twitter because before before i started the nft stuff and and i was oh yeah never, me too we're gonna do a twitter account like i always thought it's so fucking stupid man yeah i hated and, and that was my least favorite just politics and 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 just shit talking everywhere yeah, and I, yeah. i really don't have to be in connection with that but um yeah there was no way around it doing the nft thing and um I've grown to like it actually, oh, even yeah. though I, I really don't, I really don't um, use it for like the typical, you know, uh, apart from the NFT space, I really don't use it at all. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I don't, I stay out of politics and, and yeah, it's fine. Yeah, you right. just got to no cu- point in all that shit. Yeah. You just got to curate your feed and it's all just amazing art. You know, it's all just like cool art and NFT yeah, stuff. I've and... discovered so many great artists in this. Space I know. So much inspiration really. Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's There's cool. so many good artists out there, and and I'm, as I said before, I'm always like, oh fuck, I want to try this, and I want to yeah. try that as well. <laughs> Sometimes it can be a bit too much, I guess. Yeah. So what's your what are your um? Well, did you ever did your sales pick up? Are you still in in the in a sales slump? Because I most people I know right now are not selling at all. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, for me, it's, it's, it's been the same for the last, I don't know, half a year or so. It's been very quiet. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, every, I mean, some every, of these... everybody's waiting for it to pick back up, you know, who knows when it's yeah, going to Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it's going to, it's going to come back in to some extent. It's always an up and down in this space anyway. And yeah. I guess you just have to deal with that. And, um, you know, it's, it's, all, it's always to me, I guess it's also a positive thing that, that like there is times when, when I, have an obvious motivation to do some to focus on something else apart from the nft stuff again because it's very quiet then mm. i can go back to music or or go back to whatever right. whatever it is i just feel like doing at that moment and to me that's always a good catalyst for like getting rid of of, of some of the frustration or some of like the the, um, the feeling of being stuck in in what you're doing and right. like finding fresh motivation and, and loosen things up a bit again. I think right. that's important, at least to me, it is to, to be able to make, to make good art and, and not going crazy by doing it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because so, I'm, I'm, no, go ahead. I'm, yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I've, I'm not sure how it is for other artists, but for me, it's always kind of a, kind of a drama to, to create as well, because Sometimes I get stuck with technical stuff. That's frustrating. And sometimes I'm I'm just like, like it's it's not going where where you wanted to go and stuff like that. And I don't know. To me, it's always been hard, and it's always been kind of a yeah. There's a certain kind of drama and 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 pain to it for me, which is part of the deal, I guess. Mm-hmm. And and sometimes I can be quite consuming especially with 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 the music productions fucking hell the last album production was was going through hell for me it was really? hell right yeah absolutely man. oh man i love i that's the one thing i mean i always love performing live super fun playing in a band when your band is really good and well rehearsed it's so much fun but but the one i love i've always been like a studio kind of guy i love recording i love recording i fucking hate it i know <laughs> that's the thing it's like a lot there's it seems like there's and it's, it's most of the bands well not a lot of the bands that i really like are from that kind of like indie punk era and mm-hmm. for them re- albums were to promote their live gigs and they were a live band it was yeah. like they just did an album to promote the to get people to the show yeah and so their albums were like not produced that great and they were usually <laughs> done really fast um but i always love i love just the process of recording to me is so fun the building where you're kind of building on layers of starts to sound you know i mean yeah essentially it is and 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 i absolutely loved it when i started to get into it but but yeah (laughs) too much of a good thing (laughs) i I, I, maybe i I was just too much like drowning in perfectionism oh yeah and you know like losing yourself in little details that doesn't matter that don't matter in the end and that was like the that's grown to be like a very a very destructive force for me i guess and also like that was that one piece i i put on on foundation which actually got uh, bought purchased by by the unknown collector guy mm-hmm. which is called the last philosopher 
like this animated 3D piece. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I, I, I tried to animate like a, a still image mm -hmm. um, with lots of layers of cloud videos and stuff like that. And oh, yeah. yeah. I made some mistakes on, on, on the way there, like with different frame rates of different videos and different qualities and stuff. And, and at some point, my After Effects just drove me insane. Man. And <laughs> there were some little glitches in there. And, and oh, I right. I did. Where, wasn't that in the in the chat weren't you like oh you were already in there yeah weren't you posting like i can't get this to line up and it's jumping yeah, and there's this weird beam of light coming through and you can figure it out yeah and it turned out i just the only thing i had to do to fix it was just restart my fucking computer <laughs> must have been there must have been some kind of glitch in the in the cache and it showed it like oh wherever I opened it, it was still in there. And after <laughs> I restarted, everything was fine. And I was trying to figure that out for hours and hours and fucking destroyed me, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's digital, digital art. Yeah, yeah I remember this. Yeah, this is great. Uh, yeah, that's that's oh man, it's maddening. Mad yes stuff like that can be so fucking frustrating especially <laughs> if you put like a week of work into it oh yeah that very last little bit you just can't get it to work, <laughs> you can't get it to work. it's so close <laughs> but man when you when you do you just want to be done with this yeah. fucking thing and then but when you do get it it's like ah it feels so good to finally get it done yeah like, yeah man, absolutely every every time i've done the one of my animations now and i finally get the audio synced up and everything is looping perfectly and yeah, there's not a, a glitch feeling. yeah it's such a it's like uh because i was having trouble with frame rates and stuff too because it's like you know everything defaults to 29.97 on it. and i was just like yeah. i was relearning after effects after 20 years so it was like i was having trouble with glitches and and stuff and i finally kind of figured it out but um so is that what you're comp it compose uh doing your your comps in or your layering and after effects uh by now mostly yeah i've, I've started uh, doing video stuff in premiere pro actually a yeah. couple of years ago that's, that's what i bands. use yeah i use premiere and after effects yeah i actually prefer after effects by now and and um it, it got a long time and it took me a long time to get into it but uh it's it's a great program but also it's that fucking Adobe Cloud. I mean, it it causes so much trouble all the time. I think I know like, they keep changing it, man. It's like once a month yeah, they've all having, the time, man. The program looks completely different. Yeah, and 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 like there's suddenly it does different stuff with different commands and shit. And you want to get back <laughs> to normal, and then you have to Google that shit. And it's I know annoying and unnecessary. Sometimes. Nobody's happy with it. I never hear anybody talk yeah. about how happy they are that. That the program's always getting updated. Yeah, same. I, I guess uh, I don't know. Sometimes I tell myself that's just my inability and and my um, unknowledge of of the program. Right. But <laughs> then I, I read stuff from pros that just say the same thing. Yeah, and it, it's just a bug. It just doesn't work, and that's just the, the end of it. And right. Yeah, nothing you can do. It's just like having to find workarounds all the time, which is yeah. fucking annoying. <laughs> But, but yeah, for animation, for still animation and stuff like that, it, it can be really great. And that last piece I did, like the the, the Statue of Liberty piece. Yeah, yeah. that's super cool. Um, yeah, I, I, I actually love that piece. And, and uh, yeah, it turned out exactly the way I wanted it to without yeah. big trouble this time. And I was really happy. Oh, that's that. good. Yeah. <laughs> I learned a lot from that other piece. <laughs> So do, do you have any, um, uh, I know your, your girlfriend probably needs to go to sleep. We're, we're up at about two hours right now. Do you have any, uh, oh, she already is in bed anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, do you have any, um, I don't know what are, what are, do you have future plans for your artwork or the NFT space or your band or what do you got kind of coming up in your future? Good you question. Have big goals I mean, just, or anything, or are you just kind of going with it? I think that the time for big goals is has passed for me. Like, <laughs> I've, I've reached some of the goals I've set for myself with the band and uh, with the music. And of, of, of some of those goals, I've grown really tired, to be honest, like over the years. And um, I don't know, my goal is just find finding as much peace as I can in everything I do. And, and like my living situation, I'm, I'm very um, 
very sensitive towards noise by now and I always try to like find a better apartment or like trying to find a house finally mm-hmm. which is affordable you know that you don't have the neighbor's noise and all that shit right I fucking hate that <laughs> but um yeah I mean that's my goal by now like everything I do trying to find as much peace as I can and, and as much freedom and and um what's the word independency to to, to like you know independence to to be able to do what you want without being restricted by by all those many things that society wants to put on you right well and getting back into music again like live shows which is happening actually which is cool how are you starting to play again yeah we've played a couple of shows uh since this year again which which were great really like good experiences and oh cool next we next year we're flying to iceland to play a show which is great oh wow that's cool yeah some some touring coming up next year as well and yeah i'm, I'm glad oh. this is happening again it's, it's always a good you know like a good balance between the visual art right yeah it's cool that you got both that's one thing i wanted to do with the nfts or i i I have been doing, but they've been mostly like just weird sounds that I've been animating my uh, with my NFTs. But yeah, yeah, right. My, the goal would be to, you know, do create my own music and then use that for, for, for my NFTs, make, you know, for an animated thing. That would be really fun. Um, so I'll have a reason <laughs> to get back into to music. Get, yeah, because it's like I've, you know, I, I know a little bit about recording and, um, you know, I could still play and, uh, I just, you know, it's like, I gotta, I have to make money. Everything do has to make money because it's so expensive and I've got, you know, my business running. So yeah, I know the feeling, you know, so it would be cool to have, to have a reason to do music. I hate, it sounds bad to say that, but it's like, no, no, I totally get it. It's kind of the reality. It's like, it's, I gotta, I gotta make money with it. I don't have, I, right. I don't have spare time to just do fun things. <laughs> That's why it's like, yeah, it's, it's the same for me. It's, it's always this, this kind of point, like whatever I'm doing when it comes to art, at some point it has to be lucrative as well, because like I can't live on just right. having fun. Right. Right. Yeah. So, That's but it's like, reality in a way though that's um you know it's kind of like you're gaming the system in a way like you're not having to work somewhere you don't if you can work that out that's like the the ultimate thing if you're creating what you want and making money from it that's kind of the dream really you know which we're all living i guess to some extent i mean yeah there's always like there's always up and downs in in this kind of thing as well sometimes yeah. you don't enjoy it or you don't enjoy the whole process like there's shit you don't like doing yeah. but you still have to i mean that that's always part of the whole thing is yeah it? yeah but i mean yeah I'm, I'm extremely grateful to be able to do what i'm doing and and not having to work for some some yeah for some shitty place i don't like or yeah having to go to work every day and you know like there is so much resentment and and negativity and that kind of stuff for so many people yeah it's just disgusting and and also sad i think yeah yeah it's you know makes people miserable so yeah i mean let's just be grateful for the for the great opportunity of being artists i guess yeah (laughs) definitely yeah we're lucky for sure do you have any uh, plans for new, specific new NFTs or anything? I'm always working on stuff, to be honest. I have this fucking, um, this generative, uh, uh, generative oh, I guess, right. uh, project with these skulls I've been doing. Oh, okay. Which I've put a lot of effort into already, but uh, I've, I've never been sure so far where to put it and, and how much of them I want to generate in the end. And um there's a lot of potential in there but yeah i guess there's also the generative stuff there's like the the thin line between you want to try to blow it up and then you have to have like a whole marketing team Uh, yeah yeah and all this fucking shit and and i'm just not up for that i know exactly that's what uh uh, my friend it is the the um toddler toddler pillars yeah 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 i've seen these which are great by the way yeah yeah 
I've, I've listened to to that. Uh, oh, to you that, listened to that uh, episode? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was just saying it's so much work. It's so much right, and so much responsibility as well. Yeah, and, yeah. You so can't focus on anything else when you do stuff like that. I am not into that at all in the slightest. No, no, but it's like either. I would love to do something with, you know. I've said it a million times on here. It's like. My stuff is just so suited to that. Yeah, true. Because there's head and shoulder, it's portrait, it's, it's all different characters. And I know I'm going to, you know, uh, you know, hopefully I'll eventually do it at some point, but there's no way in hell I'm going to do it anytime soon. Because <laughs> there's, I can, I can deal with it. Not with all the other stuff I got going on. Maybe I'd have to like partner with somebody and let them deal with all that or something, but then you have to find someone you trust. It's not going to yeah, right. that's, rip that's you off the big thing for me. Right. or, or screw your whole reputation up in the community, mm -hmm. you know, just by doing a shitty job. Yeah. Right. You know, or, you, or like scam you or whatever. Or there's scam so you. There's a million different things that can happen. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I think like FX Ash could be a, a cool place to to put something like that, which was like my original deal for the for that skull project. Well, yeah. What is FX Ash? I don't even know what that is. Is that just like a one of the platforms? One it's of... like I think it's still in beta mode or or not anymore by now. I'm not sure, but uh, it's like a Tezos platform. Okay. Which is, is based on you basically just uh, put your generated like setup as a zip file in, into their system, I think. And, and the rest, uh, it does by itself. Like, Oh, so, so you do, you kind like, of have to pre-generate it, like, like put all the layers in the right order and stuff like that. So you create like 50 different things based on all your different layers. Right. You manually do it, which right. I think is cool. I think that's fine. I mean, that seems fun to me, but, and then, the, and then, and then you have uploaded a zip file and then it distributes them. I mean, it actually generates uh, as many as you want from from those layers. Like you, you could do like f wait, let's it, say five. It five generates them. It yeah, generates yeah, right. the different looks. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's cool. So you put in the different layers and make right, them right. work together in in any variation possible, and and if that works out, then uh, the the system does the rest for you. But I think you have to set up like a, a generative. Uh, um uh text file which gives all the commands like what to do how many uh, oh, okay like, oh, okay okay stuff like that yeah you need, but, a, uh, you yeah, need a coder I, I for that i think up. right no no not really <laughs> no? there's actually there's one guy who does templates for it which basically you just have to put in the right um you know the values you want stuff to be like uh -huh. which is super basic you don't have to know any code for that oh that's and, cool uh, yeah, I, I did some tests on that and it actually worked really well. So that's where I wanted to put it. But the big crux on, on this uh, platform is that it, it, all the layers have to be restricted by 20 megabytes. <laughs> oh, really? Like the whole project needs to fit into 20 megabytes. What? That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, there's ways to, to down compress stuff uh, to like a couple of kilobytes, I guess, per layer. And I tried tried all that stuff out and uh, yeah. But but there's a restriction. Like, that's a, uh, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a huge, uh, huge limitation. Huge restriction, absolutely. Yeah. But, but it's, it, it, it's also a cool challenge and, and it restricts you to just only do that and, and not go overboard with it. And I think right. I, I kind of that approach as well. So yeah. I guess that's... That's where my my skulls are headed at some point when they're ready. Cool. And by that, apart from that, I'm just always working on on, on my other like series, like the nameless stuff. There's a new one in the works. Oh, cool. Yeah, regularly dropping dropping those dystopian pieces as well. Are you are these all pre-designed? Like, do you have sketches that you like? You already have a bunch figured out, and then it's just a no, no. I'm, I'm, them, I mean, or there's kind of do them when you feel like doing them like design them and come up with new ones and uh it it, it works uh, both ways i think like sometimes it's like like this moment of oh fuck with with this uh this uh, statue of liberty oh, the yeah. land of the free peace yeah yeah uh, i just read those headlines about the, the school shooting and, mm -hmm. and i suddenly had this this picture in my head right and yeah I, I i just sat down and started working on it right away that's cool and yeah but but a lot of the times it's just like stuff that pops into my head like 
different pictures and variations and and i just write down a couple of keywords onto my phone or something mm -hmm. or like ma even make a folder in in the project folder like a subfolder with with a title in it like a mm -hmm. word title so i would remember the idea later on if, if i find the time to work on it. it it's it's all yeah it's all based on keywords i i'm, I'm not a sketch guy at all i hate oh sketches. really yeah wow. okay that's something i could never deal with even really. though you were i thought you were drawing since you were a little kid and stuff yeah but i i was always like like drawing from from reference i, I was always oh, okay really bad at just drawing from from my mind mm -hmm. like, it never worked like that for me mm. and, and yeah, i yeah. fucking love if people can do that like i know a lot I, of people I to I, do that yeah i know a lot of people my dad was like that he was reference for everything you know oh, really yeah yeah you mean your stepdad yeah my stepdad yeah he would Photo, oh wow always photo reference because i saw stuff that it, and like it, it's that very surreal kind of yeah i mean he would elaborate on it he would use just a figure oh, okay. and then you know add on top of that but he was like a, a reference guy for sure okay you know i know a lot of artists like that that need reference and it's like that's just the way some people work you know i use reference when i need it or when i when i'm stuck you know i use it um quite a bit but i can sketch to where i don't you know i can get the ideas down without it yeah, i could never do that like it, it just looks so crappy I'm, I'm just like there's no point in even <laughs> so you're creating you don't have sketches you no, don't have no, sketches no, no, no. wow you're just creating the digital scenes yeah, yeah. from from nothing i mean I, your right, imagination I, I guess yeah i really have these these moments of like there's that pictures out of uh, out of nothing just that picture pops into my head and, oh, that's and, cool yeah and the, the good thing by now is i guess i can just like remember it even months later i can, oh, I wow. can remember it and, and just like basically start working on it if i want to so you need to write down like you you ha i'm you're writing a, t a key phrase to remember it kind of you write yeah, it down sometimes your, it's just a like a code for your brain <laughs> to access <laughs> yeah, something it like, something <laughs> like that it, which is i guess uh, strange in some way but it works it but for sense. these nameless pieces it's it's extremely different like th there's nothing at all i i just start from absolute scratch with nothing at all wow wow and, and just and that's why they are so fucking time intensive because right. like i start anywhere with like a piece of photography like some shape i like or whatever or color and and I just starting like started to fractalize stuff and and, and arrange it and, and it just takes fucking i don't know like i, I spend probably around 40 50 hours in, in each of those pieces wow and, and then there's always that moment where i think like it looks like shit and i can't make it work and <laughs> no matter what i do i turn it like upside down right. and it still looks like shit but then something like at some point it always works out in the end right and that makes it so rewarding i guess yeah 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 the struggle makes it rewarding yeah a lot of times well cool man well thanks so much for coming on the show it was really great yeah talking it to was you. a it was a pleasure man Absolute see yeah pleasure. two hours just over two hours just flies by oh fucking hell yeah true <laughs> <laughs> well, i could go on for hours <laughs> where uh where can people see your work i'll put it in the in the description but tell people that don't want to look uh i, I guess uh, my website is always pretty up to date i try to to keep it to keep it up to date as possible as much as possible it's it's uh, csaros.com pretty easy c s a r o s.com uh, right there's all like a couple of my freelance stuff is on there a couple of my bone stuff and uh yeah all the all the nft stuff of course so yeah i guess that's the best overview of all the shit i'm doing like at least to, apart from the music <laughs> yeah how do they find your your what's the best place to hear your band um i guess also the website I, i'd say which is uh, the band name is uh, s c h a m m a s c h dot com cool all right well thanks again don't hang up after i stop recording but thank you for coming on the podcast great talking to you and uh say you have to say goodbye audience that's the yeah, last thing cheers. thanks for listening <laughs>